Harvest Foursquare. Uh, I want to invite us to stand up right now. We're going to get ready to do some praise and worship. Also, as a heads up, you probably saw on your chairs uh, some stickers. These are for you to take. Take as many as you want. We have extras. And so if kids want stickers, take extra stickers. Uh, we're going to be talking this morning uh, just a little bit about our church and some of the things that I feel like God has put on my heart to start leading forward in. And um, so we're going to have a really, I believe, encouraging um, time of just conversation and hearing what, 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 what God is doing. So part of that is some new looks, and so it's with the new logo and all those things. But uh, we're going to praise and worship. And so I want to invite us to pray right now um, as we just allow God's Spirit to speak to each one of us this morning. All right, so let's go ahead and just pray. So, Lord God, we are thankful that we can gather here. We are thankful that you are a God who knows us personally, but yet is global. And it's not just us here at Harvest or in Shelton or in Washington or whatever. You are moving around the entire world. But God, yet you know each one of us personally. You know what our mornings were like. You know what our weeks were like. You know all of the things that we are processing, thinking about, worried about, excited about. And so, God, this morning we pray that our hearts and our minds are open to receive from you, Lord, as we respond back to you out of this place of, not, of, of knowing that we are loved, that we have hope in your gospel. So God, speak to us this morning, and we give you all of the praise. In Jesus' name, amen.
beaten, you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. The empty cross, empty grave, life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. We could have the ushers come forward and we'll present our tithes and offerings to the Lord as an act of our worship. God, we just thank you for what you've done to give us that happy day. And you have given us today and we can choose to be happy in you, God. And so we offer up, God, our provisions that you've provided for us. We give them to you to further your kingdom. And we pray, God, you'd bless us Bless your people, God, as only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. You were the word 
beautiful name, yeah. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. Come and consume. Jesus. 
Jesus, only Jesus, Jesus. We love the name, the name above all names. Oh, Jesus. We love you, oh, we love you. We
could get used to this. Well, I could get used to this. The fragrance of your presence. I could get a moment earlier when we were singing that song, Beautiful Name, uh, there's a lot of declarations in that song uh, really for us to declare the name of Jesus. There's no rival. There's no equal. There's really nothing that comes against what Christ can do through us and in us. And the, not only through his love and his forgiveness, but really his power and through his Holy Spirit that we can do the good things and I think even just to, to take a moment to reflect on that, I was reminded of Ephesians 2.10, which is a verse that a lot of us probably have heard maybe growing up in the church, but it says this. Paul, writing to the church in Ephesus, says, For we, this is the church, those who believe in Jesus, are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. That phrase right there is super important. Sometimes we forget, like, well, I've done this, I've done that, I've thought this, I've thought that, or this has occurred in my life, like, God can't use me. No, we are created anew in Christ Jesus, and it says here, so we can do good things he planned for us long ago, and those good things are continually witnessing of the hope of the gospel and using the giftings that he has given us because there is no equal, there is no rival. There is nothing that comes against the name of Jesus. And so as we raise our kids, as we are in other relationships, as we are at our workplaces, wherever, like we have a very, very powerful thing that we carry with us. That's God's spirit. And that's the name of Jesus that he has given us all authority in. And so I want us to just take a moment and you can be seated where you're at right now to just visualize a few things that are happening maybe within your current context, maybe family struggles, maybe bad news, hard news, or maybe great news, maybe good things. But just to say, all right, Lord, you have given us authority to keep moving forward, to do the good things that you have planned for us long ago. So God, I'm gonna believe I'm going to have the faith, and I'm, I'm going to ask for more faith in the hope of what you are doing through me is, again, the authority through your name, not in my own power, not in my own abilities, but through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so whatever that situation might be, just, just visualize that. Just have your eyes closed and say, in the name of Jesus, empower me 
to walk forward in whatever it is. Maybe it's an it's a, it's a anxiety or a fear of a current situation to say, Lord Jesus, you have authority. You will protect maybe these people or you will give me the words to say to these people. But Lord, if it's, if it's something that is celebratory, say thank you, Jesus, and to use that to give you praise and worship and honor. So take a few moments just to reflect on that and to respond in that heart. Lord, we give you honor and praise. Lord, we just take even a moment to just recognize that you have a powerful name. That your name is just not just, ah, it's Jim, Bob, whatever. It is Jesus, our Savior. Jesus, our healer. Jesus, the baptizer through the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, you are our king. You are going to come back for your people. And so we claim that. We believe in that. And we submit to that, Lord. So Holy Spirit, continue to just minister to each one of us. Today, not only in this service, but through the rest of the day, Lord, and through our weeks, that we are continually being reminded that we have power in your name, and that we are, we are created anew in you, Lord, not anything else, but in you, so we can do the good works that you have planned for us long ago. So God, we, we pray this. In your mighty name, amen. Amen. Well, right now we're going to just transition um, for our kiddos to get lined up with, with Miss Debbie, who will be in the back area right there where Mr. Whalen is stopped. Perfect. And um, for the rest of us, let's take a few moments just to say hello to someone and to say hi. If you've never met somebody that might be here or an old friend, um, and then we'll get going here in just a few minutes.
All right. All this great fellowship happening. It's like finally the coffee kicked in. Because everybody was like, man, I woke up a whole hour early needing my coffee. It kicked in. We are alive. We are, we are bubbly. Uh, who's, who is not a morning person? I'm just kind of curious. So, yeah, so that extra hour was like, wait, what? It's still dark outside. This is not great. This is not great. Well, again, welcome to Harvest Foursquare. My name is Pastor Cooper, and uh, I'm honored that you are here, and I'm honored to be the pastor here at Harvest Foursquare. And um, I'm excited for today. We're going to talk a little bit about some vision and just what God has been placing on my heart and just processing through. But before we do that, I want to talk through two kind of all church things. Um, the first one is, I feel like it's, this year is already going by so quick, but Easter is just a month away. It is, it, is, it is coming here. And so on Easter Sunday, which is April 9th, we are actually going to have two services in the morning. So 8.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Um, on Easter Sunday. Um, so we have room for people. Um, we're already kind of getting a little, little packed. And so um, Easter is traditionally a time where a few more people will come. And I also want to encourage you to invite people to come to Easter services um, because it is a very big moment, not only just for the church, but um, it's, it's a way to really just communicate, again, why we do what we do. And that's because Jesus rose from the grave. And since he rose from the grave, we have hope of everlasting life. And so we, we talk about that every Sunday, <laughs> but uh, it's, very, uh, it's very poignant on Sunday morning for Easter Sunday. So April 9th, we'll have two services, 8.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Um, we're going to have kids' classes available at both of those services. And so if you have kiddos or grandkids or friends that have kids, just know that we'll have some classes for them as well. So 8.30 and 10.30 on Sunday, April 9th. Uh, the next thing, again, is our YouTube channel. Like I mentioned a few weeks ago, we're going to be moving from Facebook, where we've been streaming our live services, and we're going to stream our services live through YouTube. A little bit more of a friendly platform, and there's a lot of tech jargon, but it's just a better way of doing it. <laughs> so um, in two weeks, so if you're online right now watching or watching later, just know that in two weeks is when we will make that switch over to YouTube. And so the easiest way is you go to YouTube, search Harvest Foursquare, that's what it'll look like. Um, you'll hit subscribe, and that'll put you right in. And so when we go live, it makes it really easy. If you're at home on like a smart TV, hit the YouTube app. It'll pop up right there, and you can watch the services from your TV. Or if you're using, you know, your phone or a tablet or computer, it makes it easy as well. So make sure you're subscribing um, to that. Well, as I mentioned earlier, and um, it's on your seats we have a new little logo that we're running with, and that's Harvest Foursquare, um, and it says established 1944, and something that I want to kind of lead into our Vision Sunday and talking about vision is the legacy and just the history that this church has had in this community and really just the, the, the good things that God has already been doing. But really, I was reminded, even on Tuesday night, we had a members dinner, and we talked about all these things as well, is the prayers that people have been praying, really, since even before 1944, when there was a core team that people of people that came and planted this church, but the prayers of future that were really sewn in deep here at Harvest Foursquare in the 40s, in the 50s, the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, into our current time. That is powerful stuff. And I was telling our members, in, in my uh, pastorship and being a part of churches, it's usually been uh, four square church plants. And so like the, the oldest church that I was a part of planted in 1999. And so it's like, whoa, 1999, yeah. And then when the Lord led us here to harvest four square, I started learning the legacy and just the history. I was like overwhelmed. I was like, are you serious, Lord? Like, you're going to trust me to lead this just people that have been just sub submitted and committed to your gospel? Like, 
wow, this is an honor. Just a huge, huge just step of like, thank you, Jesus. And um, so I've been here for five months as, as the lead pastor. And in the first month, we were doing some cleanup stuff. And, and um, Debbie, who is also in our front office, there was this old safe that was just in the office for, for years, and nobody could really open it. And um, we're like, hopefully there's gold bars or something in there, you know, right? Or old stock certificates from, like, Boeing or something when it initially started. Like, these are worth a million dollars. Um, but none of that was there. And, but what was there that was even greater was the original council notes, notes, the original receipts, the original things from the first, first Sunday meeting of the church. And so I just, I just took a moment just to read. I get a little emotional. Just like, wow, this is huge stuff. And like, thank you, Lord, that I get to be a part of this continuation. And in that moment, too, and if you were here with us in early October when, when we were installed as the lead pastors from our district administrators, um, Fawn Kobler, one of our regional pastors, gave a message that said, hey, like, you're in this new season in kind of this Joshua context, and you're going to lead forward, and there's going to be some, some new tactics and some new weapons that the Israelites had to use going forward, and that's kind of what she saw for this church, and it's like, all right, Lord, like, what does that mean? And so we're going to talk a little bit of the why that God is planting within my heart and I believe for this church. We're going to talk about some of the what as well, but it's really going to center on the why we exist and why are we going to, like, why, do, why are we here at Harvest Foursquare? And so you can go to the next slide, Diana. What is vision? When we talk about this, there's a few things. It can help with direction, help with guidance, give future pathways, but also some avoidance. Um, there's, a, there's a verse within Proverbs that's really more in the context of, of raising kids and having good relationships. But it says, those who don't have vision will, peril, will, 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 uh, will perish. And so we got to have vision. And a lot of it is focused from what Jesus gives us in the Gospels, from his great commission, both in Matthew 28, but also in Acts 1, of saying, hey, you, you're going to be my witnesses. Like, go, th- go therefore and make disciples, right? But we also have to say, all right, Lord, we are placed here in Shelton, Washington. How are you going to use us? What is the vision that you have for us? And go to the next slide, Diana. So steps of the vision is to honor the past, to seek what God is planning in the next season, and be faithful to move forward. And I want to take a moment to honor the past from really the original, and I talked about this on Tuesday night, but um, what was so dear to me is Miss Anita Nault, who is one of our main intercessor prayer team leaders. Um, She was in her mama's belly when this church was planted in 1944, and she's been here ever since. Like, she is a person of faith and a pillar of faith, not only in this church, but in this community. And I really want to honor, to this last current season of, of the Wilson family. And I've been so just overwhelmed with the kindness and the love and, and just being a part of this process and being welcomed in. And so I want to say thank you guys so much for continuing to just let me in on your, on your life, and, and I'm really honored, and, and I'm excited, too, for just what the Lord has in the future. Um, this last January, we had our prayer and fasting time, and the Lord had been working some stuff in my heart really the last year and a half since we first said, all right, there's something new that God has for us. When we were still pastoring in Cheney, um, we didn't know where we would be at, and we were just the Lord just started working on my, on my wife and I, like, we might be moving. This is a big step because we got it made in Cheney. Like, we are in a great church, great community, great family. But God was like, I, he started kind of just poking and prodding. And so there were some things kind of planted within my heart. And so this last season of our prayer and fasting, I just kind of was like, all right, Lord, like, is this what we have for the church here moving forward? And so that last step is to be faithful to move forward. And so I feel like we're in that step now where we're going to start moving forward with some things that God has been preparing in my heart for a little bit. And so you can go to the next slide now. So we're going to talk through a vision statement, um, mission statement, and kind of a pathway forward um, with what we're going to be doing here at Harvest Foursquare. So the first one is just our vision statement. 
And this is not going to be a written out statement. Eventually it will be on our, on our website, but this is the big picture. This is like this holy discontent of what I see God doing within our community, within our city. And my vision, just to be very upfront, is to never be the most popular, the biggest, the best, all those things. My vision is to see a city transformed by the local church just living out a lived life of Jesus. That the things of Jesus that we read about in Scripture, that we teach each other about, that we digest, that that just becomes our new norm. Um, We live in this area. We understand that there is brokenness in this city. There is brokenness in the connected areas around. It's not hard to find that. But I truly, truly believe, and there already is great things happening in this city, but I believe we're going to continue to see that throughout our community as all of the churches start to really just allow the Lord to go forward, and we're going to see transformed lives. It's going to be transformed through the ministry of Jesus and nothing else. And we're going to see immense change that will then just filter out and be bigger and bolder and saying, wow, that place, the whole Mason County, there's been transformation. It doesn't come from a government policy or this or that or a program that gives money this way or that way. It's coming through transformed lives. That is a holistic transformation. And so part of this now is putting that into practice. And so our next one is our mission statement. This is going to be a statement that we're going to start to see a lot of when it comes to our church and our ministries. And so it's simply this, and you go to the next slide, that Harvest Foursquare exists to saturate Shelton with life-giving disciples of Jesus. Um, moving over here from Cheney, it's a lot wetter <laughs> in, in, in Shelton, right? We are saturated with moisture, but I believe we are going to saturate Shelton with life-giving disciples of Jesus. So what is a life-giving disciple? Life-giving disciple is a follower of Jesus who has received the gospel, is responding to the gospel, like we're continually responding to the hope in Jesus. And not only are we being restored, but we are bringing restoration by sharing the gospel. And so this next little slide will give us kind of a visualization of, of what that is. Oh, yeah, this is good. And then the next one, sorry. Um, so what is the gospel? Restored life in the death and resurrection of Jesus. What I, again, believe within our vision is there's a lot of life that is being taken away from our culture. The enemy's number one goal is to rob, steal, and destroy His native tongue is just lies. That's his speech, his untruth. But what Jesus brings us is restored life, true life, and as found in his death, but even importantly, more importantly, is his resurrection, that we have life, that we have power over sin and death, and that is found only in Jesus. And so life-giving disciples are going to be restored to life in the death and resurrection of Jesus. So this next one is a little kind of graph about this receive, respond, restore concept. So let's go see that. There it is. So life-giving disciples, you can see in the top right, we're going to receive that gospel message. That's going to transform into a life of response that we are being made into the image of who Jesus is. That we're not, like we are justified, like yes, we were without sin, but we're still have some familial traits in our lives that we're still letting the Lord, through his Holy Spirit, refine us. And so we are responding to that to bring not only restoration in our lives back to the Father, but we will be the vessels to bring restoration to our community. And then in that restoration, we are presenting the gospel for others to receive and to continue that loop. And so it's a continual process that we will, again, be saturating Shelton with life-giving disciples of Jesus. Let's go to the next slide. So this is kind of our frameworks and values. 
um, some of the ways that we're going to start moving in our discipleship to have a balance, to have kind of, um, I would say, accountability to how we are making life-giving disciples of Jesus and how we are following God's word. And really, this is all coming to from Jesus' call of the earliest disciples. In Matthew 4, 19, he goes to, to, to Peter and John. He says, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And so part of this process is like, we have, to, we have to say yes to Jesus. We have to receive that invitation. We have to hear that. Once we receive it, then we can be responded. Like Jesus says, I will make you is a process of response that we are being transformed. And he says, fishers of men. So we're going to go out and bring this saving message of the gospel to bring restoration and hope to our community and to the people that are placed within our lives in the shared context that we have. It'll happen both here at the church, but again, I see it happening in a greater capacity in our community. Because here, I have to always tell myself, yes, I'm pastoring the 80 to 100 people that are here at Harvest Foursquare. But I'm also called, and we are also called as royal priests, like it says in 1 Peter, to go out to the 15,000 people that are in the greater Shelton area. That's also our parish. Those are the people that God has called us to and to witness to. So it's more than just here. It is out there as well. So framework and values. You can go to the f- first one. I apologize. It's a little small, so I will make sure I, I um, say it. The top part says experience and presence. The bottom right says mission. The bottom left says a biblical formation. And there are circles that all are intersecting. And there's, there's areas that we can maybe emphasize in certain ways. And I want to say this. This church is doing a really good job in carrying this out already, being a balanced church that's producing life-giving disciples of Jesus. We're going to just have this now written in the shared language so we're all on the same page with it. And so you can just kind of start clicking through, Diana, on the next, you know, six or seven slides. If we're just focused on experience and presence, it can become a very hyper-spiritual place. Go to the next one. If we're just focused on mission, we can become just really focused on secular renewal. Like we're just kind of like any other nonprofit that just is using funds just to do some stuff. And we're not really maybe giving the gospel message to Jesus. If we're all about biblical formation, we can become a spiritual narcissist. Like I have all the information. I read my Bible the best. Everyone else is wrong. That's not healthy. But then you can kind of go into like some combinations where Maybe we have some biblical formation and mission, and we can have social activism, which, okay. Um, we'll go to the next one. We can kind of be up in that top area where we can have some shallow servants. We still don't have the good biblical formation. We're just very spiritual and just doing the works of Jesus, which are good, but we don't have the frame of reference of our Bible formation. Then that last little kind of one, we can be, become spiritual self, selflessness where it's all about, like, me and the word and the spirit, and we're not carrying out the shared mission to the people that God has called us to. And so what we see and what I am seeing is right in the middle is that sweet spot. Life-giving disciples of Jesus are found in that middle area where we're taking in biblical formation, our shared mission that Jesus has led us in, and we are pursuing the spirit, like Paul says, like, pursue the gifts. This is a part of who you are. Like, do this. And so we will have this balance. And again, this church is doing a great, great job in this. And it is a blessing to be a part of. This is just now, now saying it out loud and having kind of a frame of reference so we can make sure that our, our ministries, our home groups, our personal discipleship has a good balance to it as we have these moments of life-giving disciples of Jesus being sent out to our area. Next slide. We're now going to move into some cultural values at Harvest. These are not theological statements. We are a four-square church. Our theology is four-square. It is a Pentecostal theology when it comes to seeing what God's word is leading us in. And last Sunday, we had asked the pastor, we had a few moments to talk a little bit about some of those theological um, stances and distinctives. And on our website, we have it all listed out if you were curious about what those are. These cultural values are more of how we are just going to carry ourselves 
as, as, as a church, as a body. And so the first one is this, that we do the Jesus stuff, all of it. We aim to be disciples that are responding to life with the heart of Jesus while aligning our life practices with his. The way of Jesus becomes our new norm. This is what this is saying. That we're not just going to pick pocket the things that we like about Jesus. We're like, oh, that's good. But that, what he says there, I don't like that. So I'm not going to really follow that part. We're following the full gospel being fleshed out and presented in Jesus. So we do the Jesus stuff, all of it. Next slide. We are intentional. So whatever we are doing, whether it be praying for people, leading ministries um, in our own lives with our kids or our spouses or whatever it is, like we will seek to love God with our whole hearts, mind, soul, and strength. This is not a weekend warrior gig. Like this is something that's just who we are and what we do 24-7. We live out defiant joy. We just got through a whole series about joy and being full of it, right? Um, I still got my little bracelet on there to remind me to be full of it, not full of beans, be full of joy. And so as a church, we will live and respond to all of life's circumstances from the well of deep joy found only in Jesus and his gospel. And that's a key part, only in Jesus and his gospel, resisting the spirit of bitterness, hatred, and anger. This life, again, will try to steal from us. We're going to say no to that, and we're going to live from that deep well of the joy and the hope found in Jesus and his gospel. Next slide. We will live out sacrificial generosity. We will be generous with our resources because that's the way of Jesus. We are telling the world we can't be bought or enticed. No matter where you go, driving down the road, in the grocery store, even online, have you ever like been talking about something and then all of a sudden those ads start popping up? You're like, what? Like, this is, this is crazy. Like, the world, the culture, the marketplace, the marketing, they want to get you, right? And, like, if you get this, you'll be happy. If you get this, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, they just try to get us, right? And sometimes they win, man, right? Like, that phone looks awesome. If I had that phone, I would never get lost, right? But what we're going to start to continue to live out, and I want to also say this, you as a church are very, very generous, you are living this out already, and I want to have just a moment just to say thank you and thank you for helping this church carry out this, this call to love on the people here in Shelton and really beyond with supporting Foursquare Missions. Like, you guys have been a huge, generous people, so thank you, thank you for that. And so we'll continue to live out that value set within who we are as Christ followers. Next one. We will champion God's kingdom on earth. We will not seek the benefit of our own status, reputation, or power, but for the kingdom of God who loves all and deserves all praise. What we kind of mentioned last week during the Ask a Pastor was the heart of Foursquare, where it's unity in the essentials, grace in the non-essentials. And Foursquare has been known as an organization that likes to work with other denominations, we're not just like, it's only us. Like, we want to make sure we are aligned on the big, big things, like Jesus is the only way to heaven. Like, we got to be clear on that, right? But some of those other side things, okay, we, we can let that side. We'll have grace in that. And so, again, here as a church, and you guys are already living this out, like, we are going to be about God's kingdom on earth. Not just trying to make the name of Harvest Foursquare famous or my name or whoever's name's leading stuff. It'll be God's kingdom that'll be made famous because he deserves all and deserves to be praised. We will contribute to the process. The answer that Jesus gives for the world, like we see in, in his gospel as they're at the, the, um, at the, at the gates of, of Hades and they're in a little kind of retreat where Peter was, they're asking Jesus, or Jesus asked them, who, who do people say I am? And they're like, well, you're this, that. And Peter says, you are the Messiah, you are the Christ. And he says, on that faith, on that rock, I will build my church. His answer is the local church. His answer for the world is that this message will be brought through the local church. And so let's be part of that. Let's just not take from that. 
Let's be contributors to the process of the local church and what is happening. Again, this is already happening. This is just something that you guys have already been living out, and I am honored to be a part of it. Next slide. We empower every generation to be life-giving disciples of Jesus. Something that I want to be very, very clear on, that a healthy, healthy church is multi-generational and multi-ethnic. When it comes to seeing the church in Revelation, it is all nations, everyone, all people coming to the, to the feet of Jesus. And so we are never going to focus on just one way of doing things. We want every generation to be a life-giving disciple of Jesus. Kingdom principles permeating every age and every stage of our people. So with that being said, here comes some of the what when it comes to our pathway forward. And the first one I want to really honor and, and give a moment to platform is we're going to start moving forward in direction when it comes to our kids and our families and putting some intentional resources, people, and finances towards that. And so um, I want to invite up Miss Megan to come on up. Give her a round of applause. So in this process, when I was praying about just, all right, Lord, like, I have a heart for our next generation because they're the generation, like, of now, not of tomorrow. Like, they're, they're here now. Like, we want to disciple them. And, and so I was praying, like, who's somebody who can lead that? And I've talked with Megan a few times. She was telling me some of her story. And Whit and I had her over for dinner back in, like, November, December, just kind of like, as like a mock interview, really, just kind of like <laughs> seeing where she's at, you know. And, and Whitney and I are just like, man, she's just awesome. She's just a person who just has a heart for people and a heart to really serve the church. And I was like, that's great. And one of my big um, emphasis also in ministry is to raise leaders up and to empower them and to say, like, let's just do this thing. And we're going to learn through the process, but let's just start going and let's just see how God will, will just use you and, and do the things. And so I want to give Megan a little bit of uh, time just to, just to share, but she is gonna, she's officially our Kids and Family Director here at Arvis Foursquare. Yeah. And so... Um, we're gonna have we're gonna start kind of moving forward in some different changes, but I want to give Megan a, an opportunity just to just to share a little bit from her heart on this. Sure. So yeah, I, again, I thank you guys so much for the honor of stepping into this role in our church. <laughs> I have been going to this church since I was about ten years old. I actually Shalika is back. Hi, Shalika. <laughs> uh, yeah, so many of you guys have uh, fostered such faithful relationship in my life, and uh, with that in mind. I wanted to share with you guys some details about what's going on in our community. So youth and children currently make up about 28% of our community. And of that, uh, of that 28%, only uh, was it one out of four students don't feel like they have someone to turn to with the tough questions. And keep in mind, this is before COVID hit. So God only knows what it's like now. With this knowledge, it is a must that we pursue our kids and our families, to receive the gospel, to respond to the gospel, and to be restored uh, in life through Jesus Christ and his gospel. Because the world is trying to mask it with their own identities. We see it all over the place. God has blessed me through consistent relationships within our church, and, um, uh, and I want to be here to help those next in line. <laughs> So I will tell you guys, I am, I'm living proof that faithful mentorship can give a person room to grow closer to God. So I look forward to all God has uh, done in our church, all he's going to do, and now in our community. So thank you guys for your time. Why don't you stay up here really quick? So I want to just pray over Megan right now. And so if you want to go ahead and extend a hand towards Megan. Uh, and that's just, again, us agreeing in this prayer, you know. Um, with that. And so, uh, Lord Jesus, we are honored here at a church um, to see someone who has not only grown up here, but has really been impacted in a major, major way, um, that her faith is solid, and she knows and, and understands the, the poles of the world, 
but also sees the goodness that is found in a true restored life through your gospel, Lord. And so, God, I pray over Megan um, that she has been already a huge blessing to this place, but as she continues to be a blessing, that you will empower her and give her the faith and the confidence and the giftings and the giftings that she never even knew existed, but will just blossom in this next season for her life, Lord. And so we are thankful. We give praise in this and um, we affirm who Megan is and we affirm not just from her amazing personality and skills, but we affirm what Jesus is doing through her, Lord. And so let us champion that. Let us support that and be a, be a church body that is um, really elevating what is going to be happening here at Harvest Foursquare. And so we pray this in your name. Amen. Thank you so much, Megan. So um, with that, she's been officially on staff since February 1st, and we've been kind of just slowly kind of getting a rhythm and a routine um, of just some things, and um, she's still working full-time up at Tractor Supply, but we, but we have been given some, some part-time here um, just to get some things set up and, and ready. And so with that, I want to talk about a, a couple of kind of structural changes when it comes to our kids and family. So the biggest one is that we are going to move the kids downstairs um, in this main church building um, for a couple of reasons, um, security and safety, um, access to bathrooms, and then space. Uh, even like right now, if we were to go out there and pop over, there's about eight or so kids. It's kind of packed in that little room <laughs> there. And so um, we're going to start the process of revamping and updating and not really remodeling, just making it kid appropriate, a place where parents and families are like, okay, this is going to be safe, but also a place where kids want to remain, just like, this is awesome, you know? Um, so we're going to be doing that process. It'll take some time, but the goal is that we will be downstairs um, for all of our kids' discipleship with that. Um, also, a part of that will be a new check-in system when it comes to how our kids will be um, checked in and how parents will pick up their children. And so you may have seen some of these, you know, apparatuses, maybe in other churches, but it's a name tag system where you will come in and you will basically put in your phone number that's in our database system, and it'll have your kids or your grandkids, whoever you come with, in there. And you'll say, I'm checking these kids in. Boom, boom. Hit print. It prints out your little name tag, and it has your kid's name on there, but it has a security code because it'll also print off a parent security tag where then the only person that can come pick up your kids is the person with that security tag. So it prevents just a good solid layer of security and, and safety when it comes to just how our kids are cared for. And it keeps a little bit more of an organization too when it comes to just that whole process because um, we really want to make sure our families who are coming feel good and safe. Um, something I also want to really challenge us with, and on Tuesday night when we were meeting with, with, the, with the members of the church, I kind of had them just do a little look around. And so I want you guys to do this as well. Just, just, just look around. Just see, the, just see the church makeup. There's a lot of wise individuals in this room. And there's not a lot of younger individuals in this room. But here's the thing, is everyone here is equipped. Everyone here is empowered. Everyone here has the, the giftings to truly, truly be a mentor, to be a spiritual father, to be a spiritual mother when it comes to the young families that I believe God will start to provide and start to fill into this place. When we first came here, my wife and I, back in July to check out Shelton, um, it was kind of a little like, whoa, this is a different place. We're not used to this. Okay. Um, but the Lord really worked on our hearts. And, and Dave Eddy, who's our district administrator, he kind of does a lot of the, like, back-end work for placements for pastors. And he gave us some information. He's like, yeah, Shelton's average median age is 33 years old, um, which is fairly young. And there's a high percentage of that with um, either fatherless homes or single-parent homes. And so I really believe, and there's already great things happening in churches here in Shelton, but I believe we're going to be a part of that and seeing an influx of individuals saying, man, the world is not working for my kids and for my family, and we are burnt out. And they're going to come back to the sacredness of Christ. 
They're going to come back to the local church. They're going to come back to the place where Jesus is bringing restored life through his death and resurrection. So I believe we are set up for a massive harvest of people to come into a restored life with Jesus. It's already here. We have the working pieces. It's just a matter of just saying, let's do it, right? And so part of that um, harvest, we got to kind of prepare for it. And so that's kind of like why we're going to be moving downstairs and revamping things and getting it ready to, to have these um, families, and these kids here. And um, it'll, be, it'll be a very, very exciting and fun time. And again, I'm really just honored that Megan is stepping into this um, to be a part of it. So yeah, amen, amen. So here's, here's what I want to do for us this morning. I want us to all stand right now um, because I want us to pray together. And I believe as we continue to move forward and continue to pray and process that, that God will start to clarify things. But I really wanted to make sure that we have the why behind some of the, the bigger moments as we move forward into the summer, into the fall, and, and as God brings people in, that we have a shared language, that we're on the same page when it comes to why we exist here, and that's to saturate Shelton with life-giving disciples of Jesus. And so what I want us to do, and um, it might be out of the comfort zone for some of you, but get used to it, <laughs> is uh, I want us to hold hands. You can go across the aisle. <laughs> I'm going to be over here. I'm going to hold Miss Mary's hand. And I want us just to pray together as, as a family and, and um, just as God starts to just work in through all of us because it's, it's going to take all of us to continue to move forward. And, um, and I really am believing for um, a transformation in this city and in this county because we're going to saturate Shelton with life-giving disciples of Jesus. So, Lord God, um, I want to again just pray honor on this place, on this church, on Harvest Foursquare, the good things that have already been done through all of the ministries since 1944 through this morning, that you have moved, that there has been amazing things that have happened because of people truly being submitted to your gospel. And so, Lord, we are just going to be a part of that. We're going to continue that. And we're going to see life transformation because people will come back to you. They're going to come back. They're going to receive your gospel. They're going to be responding to that and be restored back to the true life that you offer. Because in you we have life and a life to the full. It is a life that is everlasting. And so, God, as we um, are here not only this Sunday... We just pray again for your Holy Spirit to start working in us, to start to just bring out those relationships that have already existed in our lives and that we can see with the eyes that you have given us of how can I be a part of this relationship to not only present the gospel but just to love that individual because I have been loved and I have received the gospel. And I have true life. And so God, help us in that. Form us in that. And Jesus, we give you all of the thanks and praise. And, and before we let go of hands, um, I want us just to just briefly pray for the person next to us. Just, you don't have to even know you're praying if you don't feel like it. But, but just to give, a, I want to give a moment just to say, Lord, I'm praying for this person next to me and the person connected to me. And I'll close this out.
Lord God, again, we just, in humility, say thank you. In humility, we say, God, you are Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. You have gone before us already. And so we just step forward in what you've already prepared. Like we read earlier in Ephesians 2.10, we have been created anew in you, Jesus, so that we can carry out the good things that you have prepared for us long ago. So we say amen to that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, well, um, the next few weeks we're going to be talking more about this receive, respond, restore, and this, this, this theme leading into Easter, which is only a month away. So be blessed this morning. Um, thank you for, for being here. And then we'll see you all next week.